connecting GNS3 to the internet. The interaction between live networks and our virtual networks is an exciting prospect. In this micro nugget, I'm going to walk you through the steps required to do exactly that. Let's begin. One of the questions I hear all the time is, okay, how exactly do I take my Windows-based GNS3 and I, how do I get it to interact with my home network or even with the internet? How do I pull that off? And the answer is really simple. We're going to leverage inside of GNS3 a cloud. Now, a cloud represents some type of network connectivity. What we're going to do is we're going to create a Microsoft Loopback interface We'll tell the cloud that it represents that Microsoft Loopback interface and we'll tie it to a router. So now we have a router tied to a cloud that represents this logical Microsoft Loopback interface. Now you might be thinking, well, Keith, okay, I can see that all happening, but how is that gonna help GNS3 get out to the real network? Here's the secret. Once we have that set up, we are going to take our real interface. So it could be wireless or a hardwired connection from this PC and we are going to bridge the two together. I'll use a different color for that. We're going to bridge our real interface and that Microsoft Loopback. So they're effectively like in the same layer two broadcast domain or same VLAN. So what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? Not anymore. Whatever happens on the real network also happens on the Microsoft Loopback and vice versa. And that's how we can bridge this virtual network into the real network. Now to do it, we need to do a couple things. We need to create a Microsoft Loopback interface and we need to create this bridge between the real interface and the Microsoft Loopback. Let me walk you through how so simple it is to create the new Loopback interface on a Windows PC. To create the Microsoft Loopback interface, I want you to think of Cheese Whiz. <laughs> That's what all I think of that whenever I see the command to generate a Loopback interface. And Cheese Whiz, what's that got to do? Well, it, it reminds me of the command, which is HDWWIZ. It's the hardware wizard. We run the hardware wizard that pops up a new window, which I'll bring down. And from the hardware wizard, we say, next, I want to manually install. I want to install a network adapter. I'll hit N for network adapter and click on next. I want to do it a Microsoft and I want to do a loopback adapter. Click on next and it's going to go ahead. If I click on next, it's going to install it. Now, conveniently, I've already installed the Microsoft loopback interface. So mine's already done. However, for most people, if you install that, you have to reboot in order to take advantage of that inside of GNS3. So after you install the Microsoft loopback adapter, reboot. And then after you reboot it, you can go back to control panel and it'll be sitting there waiting for you. So here's my Microsoft Loopback interface right there. Now, the next step is how do we create this new bridged interface? And I already have one in place. It's right here. Let me go ahead and delete it. So I'll remove it real quick. I'll just say I want to delete. It says, are you sure? I'm going to say, yep. And that bridged interface is gone. So if this is my Loopback interface right here. And this is my real wireless, which it is. The way I bridge those two together is I would go ahead and hold down my control key on my keyboard. Holding it down, select one, then select the other. See how they're both highlighted? Then on either one, while they're both selected, right click. You notice how they're still selected and say, I want to bridge them. Once we click on bridge connection, it's automatically going to create this new logical bridged interface, which allows both of those devices now to effectively be in the same layer two broadcast domain. The last piece of this to make it all work would be to make sure we integrate that loopback into GNS3. And I've done so here by associating that Microsoft loopback interface with a cloud and then linking that cloud to a layer two switch, which is connected to R2's FA0 slash one interface. Now, if everything is working correctly, this interface right here logically is on the same network because it goes to the loopback, which is bridged over to the real interface, which is connected to 192.168.1.0. And my default gateway of dot one, I should be able to use as well. Let's test all that. So back, let's go take a look at our R2. And it looks like I have an OSPF neighborship change between R2 and R1, which is great. I've got a neighborship. And let's do a show IP interface brief. So here it says I've got an IP address that is manually assigned. It wasn't learned via DHCP. And let's see if I have a route as well. I've also got a default route that says, hey, 192.168.1.1 is my gateway of last resort. So let's try pinging that device. We'll take baby steps. Okay, so I can ping my default gateway and let's see if I can ping out to a Google DNS server. And that works as well. We'll do a trace out there as well. 
So the trace is just verifying that I really do have the internet access that I, I think I have. And also, we take a look at this, this trace that we're doing. There are some devices that are not responding, so hop number four isn't replying back. That's perfectly fine. Hop 12, it appears, is not replying back. That's perfectly fine. And then the final hop does, which is the 8888 server. Also, it's interesting to note that maybe somebody uh, needs to work with their TTL propagation in the MPLS network space. This is going through some service providers. And because this is a router doing this trace, this information would not normally show up, the label information, if we are doing the trace from, for example, a Windows or a Linux box doing the same trace. In this micro nugget, we've taken a look at the components required to connect a GNS3 environment to a live network, including the internet. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.